up, everybody? All right, I'm gonna break at work. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, uh, but I'm a talker, so sometimes it's a little difficult. Um, I had a student, we were originally set out to do modes and really get into them. Now, we went another path. Uh, the reason being, it wasn't so much the modes that the student was interested in, it was how to play up and down the neck in any specific key. I'm gonna show you the way that I learned it. Um, and I learned this while learning mode, so this is a great thing to put together so you can kind of start forming these scales, because I did it quarterly, not scalularly. That's always a tough word for me to say. So I'm gonna show you my method. Now the reason that I did this is, let's just say I'm in G, and I just have, right? And then I'm like, all right, well if I'm in G, I have to do like A Dorian. Everything just started being very mathematical and it started losing its musical sense. So this is great mathematically, positionally. What uh, the method that I was taught is great musically. So I'm gonna give you an example. I, I did it through uh, relative major and minor chords, okay? So let's just say I was in A minor, right? Now if I had that, you know, A, let's say uh, natural minor. I wouldn't normally jump in, right? That's not where I would normally go, generally. If I had that, I don't really know. You know, that might be it, you know? And, and that was always a little bit more musical to me. Now that's the way that I think it's probably a detriment. You guys are probably able to think of uh, the, the modes a little bit more musically, but I was not able to. So this is how I did it. I went up and down the neck. I said A minor. Right, okay. So, A minor, C. All right, now to get to the next position, I took that C, C bar chord, went to my A minor bar chord. Now, I did this for C. I would take like this G position, where you kind of like have this, right, just like a G chord, how that is my root note. All right, so if you just kind of like take this and imagine a capo following you, but you're gonna use your, your first finger for the capo, it's just taking that A minor, and you're just kind of switching and going into that for C. And then this C bar chord. Right, now from here, it always gets a little bit tricky of where to go next. So it kind of happens in two phases for me. For, from here, it goes to here. Right, Th that kind of makes sense. All right, so if you guys watch, I'm taking this, my root note, I'm bringing it up to the third, but I'm keeping those two notes there, and just putting that G in there, so it kind of happens like that. But then also this, which is kind of like my D position, just on C right there. That's the hardest one to kind of navigate through. Once you get there, you have your regular A minor, and it starts all the way over again. That might take a little bit to set in to really make sense, but what ended up happening was, do, while doing that, I knew where all the chord tone, all the chord tones were to form melody, and then I also was able to find the other scale tones, the fours, you know, the sixes or the flat sixes if I'm in minor, the flat seven, the natural seven if I'm in harmonic minor, and that was the way that I thought about it. Now I'm gonna give you an explanation of what wasn't working for me. If we had this, uh, you know what, I'm gonna make it a minor. A minor, A natural minor. Right, and somebody were, were, were to tell me like, all right, so A natural minor, so let's do it in D Dorian, right? The box ends up looking the same. What I mean by that box is it's kind of based off the minor pentatonic. So then I start doing, naturally my students as well, would start doing like, right? Because that position, that is kind of so hammered into our head of being the root note and same with this, but that's not the case. Now we have to play this scale completely differently. So we have, you know, we have our, but now we gotta focus more on here. So for me, I was like, well, why would I learn this position if I can just learn where this A minor triad is? I know that's my five, so it's my flat six. That's how I would navigate into the four chord. 
you know, and that was the way that I thought about it. So I want you guys to try it. There was a lot of information that I'm trying to pack into, into five minutes. Some of you guys probably already know this. So it, it, this is exactly how, um, if I'm doing maybe like one of my uh, more Spanish gigs or something. <laughs> time do I have any idea what mode I'm in. Um, so anyway, worked for me, has been working for some of my students, and does work for, for some other guitar players, because I was watching um, to make sure that this wasn't just going to come flying out of the blue, and one of those things that worked only for me and not for anybody else. So check it out, let me know what you think, um, and then there will be a compounding lesson, and really what that compounding lesson is, is once you find, if you're in A minor, you know, all those chords, now you can start really knowing where the other tones and the scales are, like the flat sixes, you know, and the, and the nines and all that stuff, um, which is really, really important. Um, but this is going to help you make it more musical. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think.